Everything you said, they already knew, more or less. Well, here's something that you didn't know. Two of those special atomic bombs haven't gone off. Just arrived in Langkawi. Now what we're gonna do is to refill our water, and uh, hopefully the weather stays like this. It's looking good so far. So that is our water supply. That's our water pump, and that is our grey water. That is our five dollar sink and that's where we keep it. So good morning from Langkawi. We arrived here last night by ferry boat. We went into the jungle to look at a piece of land that we were supposed to park at but we couldn't because our van is not a 4x4 and we couldn't get through the jungle so we ended up sleeping in a car park again. Tonight we won't, we're gonna find a better place. have to do before we enjoy a location. Beer cans. Okay, I'm gonna do it for this. The people who come to enjoy nature just dump their trash. There's diapers, beer cans, food, plastic, wrappers, everything. Please keep Malaysia clean. We heard about a special woman who was picking up trash during her spare time in uh, Langkawi. We found her contact on Facebook and we decided to meet up with her on Pantai Chenang. Pantai Chenang is the busier side of uh, Langkawi Island and this is where you find many restaurants and bars and cafes and bakeries. You can access the white sandy beach through narrow lanes between the main street and the beach. Here's where we found the special lady who has been picking up trash in Langkawi during her spare time. Hi! Hi! So I just need you to just tell me your name and uh, where you're from and how long you've actually been in Malaysia for. Okay, I'm, my name is Ulrike Player. I'm called Uli. Uh, I'm from Sweden and I've been in Malaysia for almost four years. So what are you doing over here, Uli? 
I am cleaning up trash, picking up trash with the Trash Hero Langkawi. So did you form Trash Heroes Langkawi? Yes, I did. Trash Hero Langkawi was started up on the 16th of November in 2015. I was inspired by uh, uh, Trash Hero Kolipe and they were doing it over there and I thought it's such an easy concept and I sure want to do it in Langkawi. It's, it's definitely needed. So I started it a little bit more than two years ago. How has it been? Has it been a good response? Are they, how do you get volunteers for Trash Hero? We are using social media to reach out to the people who are interested to join us. And the word of mouth, we talk to people in the bars and the streets and everywhere. The response, well, it wasn't very good in the beginning. And then something happened after about six months, something happened. We got a lot of response. We got companies approaching us saying, hey, we want to help you with whatever you want. After that, it kind of just kept going on. How does Trash Heroes work? Uh, we have a meeting point every week, different places in, in Langkawi. Uh, we meet up, I do a small talk about how we sorting the trash and why we're doing it and we clean up for an hour, an hour and a half and then we meet up again, we take some pictures, group pictures with all the trash and I talk about how people can change in their own life to make small change in their life but make big changes in total. So how many volunteers do you need a week per time when you clean up? The more volunteers the better. How do you get financed for, for everything that you do for Trash Heroes? Companies are giving us the gloves and the trash bags but apart from that we don't need any money. That's the thing, we just pick up trash. What do you think needs to be done to change the mentality of Malaysians? I think start with the kids, educate the kids about trash and what happens when you leave it on the ground. They will learn, they will change, and they will go home and teach their parents. I, th I believe that. About Trash Heroes, can you leave us your URL or anything like that? Yes, we have a Facebook page and it's Trash Hero Langkawi. So it's very easy. Trash Hero Langkawi. Is there a slogan? Uh, every week we clean, we educate, and we change. Thank you very much. Thank you. The bird I share this lonely view Push me up against the wall A young Kentucky girl in a push-up bra Falling all over myself To lick your heart and taste your heart Cause with the bird I share this lonely view and With the bird I share this lonely view So welcome to the Langkawi episode. Today we are still at Scarborough Fish and Chips. We've been here for the past three days. We've been parked here in the background here as you can see. We've been stationed here to finish editing episode 18 and uh, 19. Now we've done so, we're going to pack up and we're going to go to the laundromat, do a whole bunch of laundry, wash Van Halen and uh, prepare for tomorrow's shoot. So yes, this is Scarborough in the background beautiful place really good fish and chips burgers and that's the view they have a beautiful sunset so do catch it if you're ever in Langkawi okay what's going on see who didn't pin the location <laughs> what is this I can't see here's the problem we found a really good laundromat the other day because uh, it's a new building and it's next to 7-eleven so you can have a beer while you're doing your laundry and that's one reason two you can park in the back lane it's a brand new building it's really nice and shady there and somehow there's breeze from somewhere I don't know where we can't find it right now because Renee forgot to pin the location of where we did that laundry I'm doing the laundry Okay, so we have a binoculars that can look at our GoPro because we shot the location and anybody has a better suggestion. So have you found it? Mm. I use a binoculars to look at the GoPro to find this place. It's called Smith House. and the laundromat is this side here and we get to park in the back lane and it's breezy and it's cooling and the dogs can wait in the car and I wait in the car with the dogs with the aircon off, engine off. Yeah. 
So in Langkawi, it's duty-free here and beer, alcohol, is cheaper than water. Isn't that amazing? The two very important sprays that I carry in my bag all the time is the Demos, which is for mosquitoes, and the Debug Creeps for other insects like flies. Places that you go to in Malaysia or Asia, you have a lot of flies and mosquitoes. So you spray a layer of Creeps on the table where you're dining and then you people spray a layer of Demos on your body so that you won't get bitten by mosquitoes. We are showering the dogs now. Thank, thank you to Mr. Dylan at Cabro Fish and Chips. So yeah, the dogs getting their bath at 9.45 p.m. Maybe it's a little bit hard to believe that we can live in such a small space with two dogs, but we do. Uh, this is how we travel in our tiny self-built camper van. This is the tour of our camper van. Uh, we don't really need the rooftop tent anymore. This here converts into a bed at night. And this whole area becomes a bed and the dogs sleep beneath us under here. And in the daytime, this is how we prefer to keep it. We just fold everything up and then it's an open space. It's really cool at night. Uh, we don't really need a fan. We have a fan, but we don't really need it because we're by the ocean and the breeze is just really strong. So when we have our night shower, after the shower we go to bed, it's just really cool. We really don't need much at the end of the day. And by training like this in the past few months, like in Trangganu and now in Langkawi, we find that we need less and less. But what's important to us is to be able to shoot, video, edit and still load videos weekly about how we can prevent and our experience about it. Of course the burning question everyone is asking is how we shower. This is our shower tent. It zips and unzips and uh, this is what it looks like. So for our shower we have a pump, a hand pump and water comes out of here. We have two containers for water that we refill every two days and uh, I have a drain mat that I use for our feet to stand on and uh, a porta loo that you buy from any pharmacy for 15 USD and you put a trash bag in and you bag it and you throw your business away every day daily nice and clean so that's the shower mat that's the water that's the loo like that and then you zip it up <laughs>
After having spent so much time in our self-built camper van traveling across Malaysia, living in it and using it daily, we now understand what we truly need and don't need inside our van. We will spend the next month rebuilding Van Halen to better suit our needs. So stay tuned and we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Please turn on notifications so you never miss a video. If you want to help support us in making our videos, then join us on Patreon for only 1 USD a month. Till then, we'll see you in the next video.